Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Well. Yeah. Okay, I'd um, like to thank the organizers for, for inviting me. Um, so I'll tell you about um, results of, of several papers. Uh, one done with my student, Nathan, a paper with Andrei Okunkov, and a paper with uh, Edward Frankel and Okunkov to appear. So as is familiar, uh, string theory predicts existence of a remarkable quantum field theory in six dimensions, the two-zero superconformal field theory. This theory is labeled by simply laced Lie algebra G. And it's remarkable in part because it's expected to play a role in pure mathematics, in particular in the geometric Langlands program and in the knot categorification program. Um, however, the fact that this theory has no classical limit um, makes it hard to extract its predictions. Uh, AGT correspondence after Alde, Gayota, and Tachikawa serves well to illustrate um, both the mathematical appeal of the theory and also the difficulty of working with it. So the AGT correspondence uh, states that the partition function of G type, um, uh, G type to zero theory on uh, a six manifold, which is a product of a Riemann surface in R4, is a conformal block on a Riemann surface, on the same Riemann surface, of a vertex operator algebra, which is also labeled by G, the double algebra. The correspondence further relates um, defects of the 6D theory to vertex operators of the double algebra inserted at points on the Riemann surface. And if one is to take it at its face value, it's hard to make progress on it. Because we don't know how to uh, describe the 20 CFT, um, we cannot formulate or evaluate its partition function in any generality. There are exceptions uh, if you take G to be A1 or a special choice of defects, but in general, no. Am I getting too close to the microphone? I'm not. I am. So what I'll argue in this talk is that one can make progress by replacing the 6D conformal field theory, which is a point particle theory, by the six-dimensional string theory that contains it, the two-zero little string theory. So it turns out, as I'll explain, that there is a little string version of AGT correspondence, which one can make precise in a fairly general setting. And moreover, this correspondence can be rigorously proven. On, uh, on the W algebra side, one replaces the ordinary W algebra by its Q deformation. This deform W algebra uh, appeared earlier. It was defined by Frankel and Rishitikin in the 90s. The correspondence we'll find is between the partition function of G type uh, little string theory on uh, C times R4 and the Q conformal block of the deformed W algebra on C. The Riemann surface uh, for our story can be taken to be either a cylinder or a torus. Now, I'll take C to be a cylinder because uh, you can get a torus case by, uh, ide by identifying the two ends. So it doesn't give rise to anything essentially new. So what we are doing here is on each side of the correspondence, we replace the theory with conformal symmetry with its mass deformation. In, so in either case, the conformal symmetry is broken, but it's broken in a canonical way. This is certainly true for the little string and appears to be true for these double algebras as well. Um, the reason we can make progress is that the partition function of G-type little string on C times R4 with arbitrary collection of defects at points on the Riemann surface and filling the R4 turns out to be the same as the partition function of a G-type quiver gauge theory with A supercharges, so n equals to 1 in five dimensions, on S1 times R4. So the mechanism for this is um, a, a kind of localization. What happens is that um, the 6D little string partition function that we compute, in the, uh, that one needs for this, is trivial in the absence of defects. So if there are no defects, you get a trivial partition function. And the quiver gauge theory that you get is a theory on the defects themselves, okay? on the defects of little string. 
Now, um, in the point particle limit, in the conformal limit, this localization we are using is, um, it still exists, but it's not as useful. The theory on the defects um, of the 2-0 CFT has no known direct description. In particular, it's not a gauge theory. You only get a gauge theory if you work with little string theory. So we will get a precise statement of a correspondence between a deform conformal blocks of the W algebra with collection of vertex operators on the Riemann surface, at points on the Riemann surface, and the partition function of a corresponding g tab quiver gauge theory on S1 times R4. And this correspondence we'll be able to prove for um, arbitrary g and choices of defects. So in the rest of this talk, I'll describe this uh, correspondence and its proof in more detail. And then I'll tell you about another application of little string theory to the geometric Langlands program. So um, to, uh, you'll recall that to define the G-type little string on C times R4, one starts with a 10-dimensional type to B string theory on Y times C times R4, where Y is the AD surface of type G. The resolution of the singularity at the origin of Y gives rise to a collection of vanishing two cycles that intersect according to the Dinkin diagram of G. So here's G for dn. Um, the six-dimensional little string is a, is, a, is a string theory that you obtain by taking the limit of type 2b in this 10-dimensional background, where one keeps only degrees of freedom that are supported uh, near the singularity of Y. The limit you're taking involves taking the string coupling constant to zero, but keeping the type 2b string scale finite. The defects of little string are very easy to understand. They originate as debrins of the 10-dimensional type 2b string that survive the limit. Now, um, in string theory uh, on y times c times r4, the defects that we need for our purpose are d fibrins that wrap non-compact two cycles in Y. They're at points on the Riemann surface, and they fill the R4. Now, uh, the theory on d, on d fibrins uh, in this geometry is, is well known. Um, it, it was um, understood since the work of um, Mike Douglas and, and Greg Moore in the early 90s. It's a, it's a quiver gauge theory based on the, where the quiver diagram is based on the Dinkin diagram of G. Now, the fact that the theory is the quiver gauge theory on S1 times R4, rather than the, most the more obvious one on R4, is due to a string effect. Recall, we said that the partition function of g tau little string is going to be partition function of a quiver gauge theory on S1 times R4. Um, namely, in string theory, one has to include the winding modes of strings that begin and end on the d brains. And um, so these will turn the theory on the defects supported on R4 to a five-dimensional quiver gauge theory on S1 times R4, where the circle here is the t-dual of the circle in C. Dimension vectors of the quiver are determined by the classes of two cycles in Y that support the five frames. Um, the gauge group of the theory originates from the five frames supported on compact two cycles. The matter fields come from strings at the intersections of the brains. And the flavor symmetry group comes from the gauge symmetry on non-compact D5 frames. So it's all very easy to understand. Now, for our purposes, we don't need um, an arbitrary collection of D5 brains and the corresponding arbitrary quiver gauge theory, but we need those that describe defects of 6D little string that preserve four-dimensional conformal invariance in the very low energy limit. So this imposes constraints. And the result of what describes a single puncture um, is as follows. So to get a single puncture on the Riemann surface C in the conformal limit, you actually have to start with more than one non-compact D5 brain. We, we would n plus one non-compact D5 brains where n is less than the rank of the, uh, of the ADLE algebra, okay? the number of, of nodes of the quiver, whose, uh, uh, whose relative separations, so the, the relative separations of the brains 
will vanish in the conformal limit. You'll, you'll end up taking them, um, uh, bringing the brains together. And moreover, we'll add compact D5 brains so that the net D5 brain charge on Y is zero. So you can use you, you, the possible choices um, can be classified. And he used the relation between um, geometry of the surface Y and representation theory of G. For example, the second relative homology group that contains classes of non-compact um, D5 brains is the same as the weight lattice of G. So uh, it turns out that to get a single puncture defect, uh, you should choose n plus 1 elements of the weight lattice of G, which sum up to 0, so these weights sum up to 0, and each of the weights you pick lies in a while orbit of a fundamental weight, of one of the rank G fundamental weights. So this leads to, um, so you can, from this you can read off um, the, the, the quiver. So for example, if you want something that's called a full puncture, the results are as follows. For AN, you get this quiver. For DN, you get this. For E7, say, you get that. And so forth. It's easy to understand. Now, if you consider several defects on C instead of one, the ranks of the gauge and flavor symmetry group simply add. Um, the quiver, uh, the partition function of the quiver gauge theory on S1 times R4 um, can be computed by localization, as Nekrasov and Pestun explained. Mathematically, this leads to a K-theoretic version of instant counting. Localization lets one express the partition function as a sum over the fixed points in instant on moduli space, labeled by, these, are, these end up labeled by tuples of 2D M diagrams. The contribution of each fixed point can be read off from the quiver as a product of contributions of the various nodes and the arrows between them, and in the end, you sum up over all the fixed points. Now, the parameters that end, enter the gauge theory partition function have a meaning in string theory a geometric meaning. The partition function depends on, uh, depends on Q and T for the rotation of two complex planes in R4. These are the omega background parameters. They depend on uh, parameters which I'll call X for positions of non-compact D5 brains, the mass parameters, and G for positions of compact D5 brains. They're the Coulomb module. The gauge coupling parameters are associated to moduli of little string theory that come from sizes of vanishing two cycles um, in Y. Now, as soon as we resolve the singularities of Y by giving two cycles non-zero area, the bulk of the 6D theory is abelianized. All the relevant dynamics of the theory end up localized on the D5 rings. Consequently, the partition function of little string in this background, with the corresponding collection of defects, is the quiver gauge theory partition function, the partition function of the gauge theory on the brains. OK, so um, we've understood the little string partition function. Now let me describe the double D algebra corresponding to a simple D algebra G. So it's defined by Frankel and Urshitikin in what's called the free field formalism, where one starts with a free field algebra with generators labeled by the nodes of the Dinkin diagram. And they have some commutation relations that depend on Q and T, where uh, the deformed Cartan matrix of the Lie algebra enters. The W algebra itself, the deformed W algebra, um, is defined in, the, um, in this free field formalism as the set of vertex operators of the free field algebra that commute with the screening charges. So the screening charges, Q, integrals of screening vertex, screening current vertex operators. This is analogous to free field formalism of the ordinary W algebra. And in particular, taking the limit where Q and T go to 1, uh, where fixed beta, the deformed W algebra, becomes the ordinary one with central charge depending on beta. And um, the deformed w, uh, the ordinary W algebra, of course, contains Virasor algebra as a subalgebra. Now, um, general Q-conformal blocks of this double algebra are correlators, are expected to be correlators of vertex operators of the following form, where um, Qs are the screening charges, as before. Vs are built out of free fields and inserted at points on the Riemann surface. 
and depend on continuous momenta. And the state mu is labeled um, uh, by, by, by weight, um, generates Vermont modular representation of the algebra, just the usual thing. Now, as of now, there is no uh, good night of physics or math definition of what it actually means to be a Q-deformed chiral vertex operator algebra, despite the fact that Frankel and Shatikin and others studied them um, extensively in the 80s and 90s. Correspondingly, Frankel and Rashitikin did not actually define Q deformations of general vertex operators of the double algebra that we need. They defined some, but not the ones that we need. So with my student, we showed the following. With Nathan, we showed the following. So for each collection of, uh, for each defect of little string, corresponding to a collection of n plus one non-compact defined rings, there exist deformed vertex operators that are defined in terms of the collection of weights we had before which become primary vertex uh, operators of the W algebra in the conformal limit. And um, this says this fact that you take the points together, the insertion points together as Q goes to one, um, with alpha arising as follows. Anyhow, um, the, the corresponding um, Q conformal blocks you get are contour integrals because the screening charges are integrals of screening currents. And to specify the conformal block, you need to specify the contour. Now, we show that there exist uh, choices of contours such that the Q conformal block equals the little string partition function. The weight of the Verma module is the modulus of the uh, 6D theory, and it's related to the coupling constant of the D5 in theory as follows. Now, as you can see, conf the conformal limit is the strong coupling limit of the D-fiber gauge theory uh, because tau goes to zero. So this little string version of the correspondence is simple to prove. The sum over the poles in the contour prescription to evaluate the conformal block is the sum over the instantons term by term. So there's nothing mysterious. Okay. Now, um, let me tell you now about the, another application of the string theory to the geometric Langlands. Geometric Langlands was formulated in the early 90s by Baylison and Drinfeld. In the same work, they explained that one can phrase the correspondence in the language of two-dimensional conformal field theory. The uh, Langlands correspondence, geometric Langlands can be interpreted as correspondence between conformal blocks on a Riemann surface associated to a Langlands dual pair of Lie algebras, G and LG. On the electric side, uh, we get conformal blocks of the affine current algebra associated to LG at the critical level. The critical level is infinite coupling. On the magnetic side, we get conformal blocks of the W algebra in the classical beta to infinity limit, the W algebra associated to G. The proof of the geometric Langlands correspondence was given in this context by Baylinson and Drinfeld. Um, and uh, for Opers, and by Frankel with Gates, Gorey, and Villeneuve. Now, there are two ways you might try to generalize this. Firstly, it's natural uh, to deform away from the critical level, K, or equivalently to finite beta. And secondly, it's natural to replace the, um, the conformal chiral algebras by the Q-deform counterparts. Now, the first of these has been studied. It goes under the name of quantum Langlands correspondence. In the Abelian case, it was proven by Polishuk and Rothstein. For G is equal to A1, um, some, there are some partial results due to Frankel um, with Fagin and Stajanowski, Tachner and others, but the rest is open. Now, it turns out that one can implement both generalizations, and it's actually easiest to do it at once. So in, this, in a joint work with Edward Frankel and Okunkov, uh, Andrei Okunkov, uh, we formulate quantum Q Langlands correspondence. It relates uh, deformed conformal blocks of the quantum affine current algebra corresponding to LG at level K, and Q conformal blocks of the deformed W algebra associated to G, where T uh, and Q are related to H bar and K as follows. Now, uh, we actually are able to prove this quantum Q-Langlands correspondence for any simply laced Lie algebra, in other words, when LG is the same as G, um, and say uh, just the quantum Langlands correspondence uh, follows from it in the limit uh, where you turn off the Q deformation. 
Now, the Q-conformal blocks of the electric and magnetic um, chiral algebras, the form chiral algebras, arise as partition functions of a little string theory with co-dimension four defects. The little string on, uh, um, associated to simply this Lie algebra G, uh, on, so we'll take it on, C, on the same background we had before. And the defects we need now are self-dual strings supported at points on the Riemann surface, and now on one of the two complex planes in R4. So from perspective of type 2b on, uh, on y times m6, the defect strings, they come from D3 brains that are supported on two cycles in Y and a chosen two plane in M6, in R4. And um, as before, the partition function of 6D little string theory localizes to the theory on the defects. The theory on the defects is a gauge theory. It's a three dimensional quiver uh, gauge theory of G type with n equals to four supersymmetry on C times S1. The extra circle arises in the same way as before. Now, uh, depending on the choice of boundary conditions at infinity of, uh, of C, one generates either the electric or the magnetic uh, conformal blocks as partition functions of this quiver gauge theory. More precisely, uh, each electric conformal block of the quantum affine algebra is vector valued. But from the partition function of the gauge theory on C times S1, one can generate all the components of this vector by differentiating with respect to x's or placing extra insertions at the origin. Now, um, the proof of the quantum Q Langlands correspondence that we give is uh, very explicit. It's given in terms of an explicit linear map between the electric and the magnetic conformal blocks. The linear map that we need to establish this correspondence was constructed um, in a joint work with Andrei Okunkov. Uh, for any simply Leslie algebra. So the matrix um, that relates them has a simple physical meaning. It computes the partition function of the 3D quiver gauge theory on T2 times the interval with two uh, different boundary conditions at the ends of the interval. Now, it also has a geometric meaning as the um, um, elliptic stable envelope of X, where X is the Higgs branch of the 3D gauge theory. Um, so this is a piece of mathematics. Uh, it generalizes um, stable envelopes in cohomology and K-theory of X due to uh, Malik and Akunko. To study non-simply Lie algebras, one, um, it's familiar how to do this in string theory. What we need to do here is we need to add a twist as um, you go around the origin of the complex plane that supports the defects. So the twist permutes the nodes of the Dinkin diagram um, as you go around. Another important generalization is of the geometric land lines is to include what's, what I call ramifications. This is, uh, again, very simple. It just corresponds to including uh, D fiber and defects from the first half of the talk. Now, Kapustin and Witten explained that geometric land lines correspondence uh, is related to S duality of n equals to four super young Mills theory. Now, many aspects of S duality one can understand just within n equals to four super young Mills itself or by using the 2-0 CFT, compactified on a two-torus. However, if you actually want to derive S duality of n equals to four super young mills, uh, one needs a little string theory. This was shown by Wafa in, in 97. He phrased it in the language of full type 2b string theory, but uh, it's easy to see from his work that the only piece you need is just a little string theory, in particular because he only uses conformal field theory. Um, so the role of little string in understanding as the value of n equals to four super young males surely explains why one is able to um, make progress uh, on the geometric Langlands uh, problem in the context of uh, this quantum Q Langlands correspondence. Okay, thank you. genus Riemann surface, you need, to fiber, um, you need to fiber Y over C, and the fibration you choose has to preserve the same supersymmetry as the D fibrins. I don't, I, to be honest, I haven't thought about it very much, because in this case, 
you are not going to get a gauge theory anymore. As if you get a higher genus for human surface, the theory on the fibers is going to stop being a gauge theory. So it's going to be st stop being as powerful. And it's clearly more complicated. Whether it's possible, I, I don't know. You have you have to speak up. Um, um, so um, the the car dimension four defects in the language of n equals to four super young Mills theory become line operators. Okay, so D three rings give you line operators. The self dual strings give you line operators. The D5 rings, the co-dimension 2 defects, give you the surface operators. So this story fits in our expectation of how Langlands should arise from string theory perfectly. to use this for just purely physics applications, I think one should be able to. Um, 